Hey all, Zach McDonald, your real estate agent with Real Property Associates, and this is my Seattle Real Estate Market Watch for April 4th, 2024. Well, I'm excited to be back with you again here this week. As some of you know, we had our fifth kid recently and been trying to keep up with the market stats here for all of you, continue running my business and also be home with the family. So snuck away here for a few hours so I can get this put together for you all. And again, I'm super grateful for all of your attention. So um, that's why I continue doing this, even though it's a little bit more challenging at the moment. Now, as we look at the stats here today, we're gonna do the normal recap of King and Snohomish County stats over the last week. And we are also, I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek at the upcoming market updates, which I'll publish next week for King and Snohomish County, as well as Seattle specifically. Now, let's start off with the market update for the month, because I think that's a little fun way for us to start off here today. King County and Snohomish County are both up year over year. Snohomish County is up 4.8% year over year, $760,000 median sales price. The average sales price pushing 900,000, just a little below that. In King County, median sales price was 950,000 last month, 12.2% over uh, the previous year. And just under 1.25 million for the average. Now, if we look at King and Snohomish County, King County's uh, percentage above asking price is 3.1 or was 3.1 for the month of March. Snohomish County, 2.2% above list price. So we're starting to see last month we saw this and we're seeing it even more so this month that homes are selling above the asking price on average in King and Snohomish counties. And we're also seeing that inventory is low in both cases. So last year we had lower inventory, even though we were thinking it was gonna be building, it didn't. And we're seeing this year lower year over year inventory, even though we're seeing more listings in Snohomish County and about the same in King County as we did last year, those were lower. And we're seeing that the buyer activity has been picking up. We're seeing more pending sales than we were last year. So there is not as much inventory as there was last year when things were um, they were starting to pick up this time of the year as well. So um, we're seeing that trend continuing with the market heating up and the uh, asking price just becoming a, a starting point again versus maybe the starting point going backwards, which is what we saw for a few years. Now we're starting to see things going above the asking price again in the Seattle area. Now let's look at the interest rates because this has been something we've paid a lot of attention to and really the interest rates and the market shift um, in 2022 is what was the origin of these weekly updates. And so as we're looking at interest rates this um, past week, we saw last week 6.91 when I filmed the video. And today, as I'm filming this, it is a Thursday, so a little later in the week, 6.99%. So rates are a little bit up from where they were last week. And we're seeing that prices are still climbing, right? We haven't seen the drop in interest rates and we're still waiting for it. <laughs> Maybe it's gonna come, right? We're not sure, but we're still waiting for that. But the buyer activity is still picking up in anticipation of that, hopefully later in 2024. Now, the listings this week, 664 new listings on the market. Now this is pulled from a Thursday versus a Tuesday, so things are a little different, but it should be relatively similar. 497 last week, 42 uh, back on the market versus 40. Again, that's a stat where we're pretty much talking about the expired listings. So there were 32 expired listings um, and there were 44 canceled listings. So some of those or a majority of those would have come back on the market. And that's where that back on the market stat comes from. List price reductions, 137 this week, 155 last week, so fewer of those. I do suspect we'll see fewer and fewer of these price reductions as we continue to see prices climbing and the activity climbing in the market. 
if we look at the uh, contingent sales as well here, 14 versus 13, we're still in that same window with a few contingent sales, but not very many. But that means that the door is still open for a house that has sat on the market for a little while. Usually these are homes that are unique in some way um, or maybe less desirable in some way, or they're just priced a little higher. And so those are those opportunities for somebody who wants to make a purchase contingent on selling their current home. As I mentioned earlier in the update, we saw that pending listings have been increasing and there was a slight drop off. So I'll at least highlight that here week over week, 815 last week, 780 pending listings this week. The sold listings though jumped and this is most likely because it's the end of the month and that's typical at the end of the month to see more closings happening. 612 closings versus 473. I think the big question, and this is the big question every week, is where are we headed? What is going on right now in the housing market? And my answer for that this week is we're continuing in the direction of the market heating up. We're still seeing that the amount of buyers is outpacing the inventory and it's causing things to stay tight. And because of that, we're seeing competition and that's ultimately what drives the prices up. When there are multiple people that want to buy the same thing, that's when you see prices climbing. And when you have more than what the buyer population is, that's where you see things sitting on the market, home selling for less. But right now we're trending in that direction still of homes selling above asking price and competition increasing. Now, with that being said, I've had a few different clients in different markets, uh, a little bit outside of the, you know, main cities. I had a client make a purchase um, on the south end of King County and the border there of Pierce County. And, you know, they were able to get the house for just over asking price. So that was a great purchase for them. They didn't have as much competition. It's a more unique property though. And even though there were multiple offers on it, most of the offers were in the same area, either right at asking price, maybe a little under, maybe a little over. So they were able to get it with a few contingencies and also just above the asking price. Also had uh, a few, another listing that is going to be a little under asking price um, down in University Place, a little farther out of my normal uh, location for listing properties. But that home is gonna take a few weeks to sell. It's going to be close to the asking price, but it will be a little bit less, not as much competition for this particular townhouse and location. But then another listing in Mill Creek that had multiple offers is selling above asking price. And I think it's a lot of it's location driven where the competition is, and it'll take a little bit of time for some of this to bleed out of the core uh, cities of King and Snohomish County that are closer in. You know, on the east side, you've got a lot of the east side heating up, um, and you've got a lot of the suburbs of Seattle directly, but it's going to take a little bit of time for the cities that are a little farther out to see some of this competition picking up. But I don't think it will take too long. So if you have questions about buying in King County or selling in King County or in Snohomish County, for that matter, I'd love to be a resource for you. I'm happy to have conversations about the housing market or if you have more personal questions about your specific situation and whether it makes sense to buy or sell in this market, I'd love to be a resource for you.